What's going on guys? Welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. It is a beautiful sunny day here in Texas and it is day five of the seven day CB 550 build. So we made really, really good progress yesterday. If you haven't seen that video, I encourage you guys to uh, go check it out. It was a little bit on the longer side, but that's because we got a ton of work done. So we got the engine and everything back in the frame, exhaust on, carbs, and what we need to work on today is all of the wiring. So I wanna get our handlebar controls, our headlight, the main harness, coils, and then a battery box, uh, which is gonna be the meat of the labor needed uh, to go right in this general area. I wanna keep it as thin as I possibly can. Um, and I'll show you some of the components I got to try and pull that off. Uh, I don't really want it hanging down too far. I wanna try and keep this area under the seat nice and clean. So we'll have to kind of measure and see, you know, how much clearance we have above this to the bottom of our seat, and then what our thickest components are and how we can kind of fit them in the smallest possible box. If you don't know what I mean by electronics box, this is one I built for the KZ750. So it's just this metal box that houses the battery and the voltage regulator and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel and you haven't seen the build on this, I will throw a card to the playlist. Uh, that is, to date, I think my favorite bike that I've built. And I believe that even includes my Triumph Hardtail. I don't know, it's close. That one's more fun to ride. That one's more of a something I'll keep for the rest of my life and put on a shelf and look at. Anyway, enough mumbling and rambling for today. Let's get to work. So I'm laying out all of my wiring components and I have discovered a bit of an issue. I ordered the wrong main harness. So I wanted to use the simplified like CB500 harness that has like a single fuse and doesn't have the like clutch safety switch and stuff like that just to have the least amount of wiring possible. Just one to simplify the bike, two to fit better in our smaller battery box. And I guess I did something wrong and I ordered the wrong main harness. So I won't be able to use this main harness. Not a huge deal because I actually have Another harness that's complete. It's really not in bad shape. I'll have to clean it up a little bit, a few wires here and there, um, and it's gonna connect to all of our components. I'm gonna switch out the starter solenoid for a better one, but have my modern regulator rectifier in here, all the other wires. This will go to our tail light, our LED flasher relay. You know, this is where the stator and stuff comes out of the engine into the harness. So everything else is good here. So I'm gonna be able to clean that up and make that work. Uh, this goes down to our points into our rear brake switch. Comes up, this goes to our ignition switch. This goes to the coils. Coming up here, this will be inside of the headlight. Most of these are in good usable condition. So I'll just have to clean them up a little bit. The um, two switches I got. So this is a new right hand switch with the kill switch, headlight on off and start button. I should be able to wire all those in without an issue. The other problem I found is this is the left switch, you know, slash where your um, clutch lever mounts. And this is a totally different style connector. I think this is probably from maybe a later 550, maybe a 750. I don't know, I didn't do a great job either because even on this new harness, you can see it's all bullet connectors inside the headlight. So there wouldn't be anything for this to plug into. Not a huge deal. I'm just going to have to um, see if I can find a wiring diagram to be able to figure out which wires are which and I can just match them up or get it in here with my test light or my uh, power probe and just figure out which wire goes to what because these colors do not match what's on our harness. So just add a little bit of extra work for myself, but uh, it's nothing too crazy or uh, anything we can't figure out. switches in place um, before I dive into the wiring and everything inside the headlight, I really want to get cracking on this uh, battery box. So the main components I need to fit in here are my battery, which I'm using an anti-gravity uh, 401. I'm hoping it's going to be enough. Um, I saw some reviews on the internet that said it was no problem. These motors don't take a whole heck of a lot of cold cranking amps to turn over. Um, so I guess I'm going to be 
and <laughs> the guinea pig. I have this exact battery in my Triumph, uh, but my Triumph is kickstart only. Um, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that this works. I'm gonna build the box um, a little bit bigger than needed for this so that if I do need to go to an eight cell or one of my uh, other kind of lithium ion options, we'll be able to do that uh, without much issue. But I was curious, I wanted to try this battery on the bike because look how small it is. So I'm thinking this will go somewhere around this area. This is my ground that I'll be able to run in there. I'll have this main harness able to kind of run in in this front corner as well as my starter uh, connection that is going to go to the starter solenoid. Uh, that can run in right here as well. So, I mean, this may end up going maybe that way and then the starter solenoid can kind of go right here. We can have, you know, we can kind of mess with the configuration uh, after the fact. And then the other big component is the um, regulator rectifier. I run these in battery boxes without any issue. I have one in the Kawasaki that's in a battery box that has uh, not a ton of ventilation built into it. And even on hot Texas summer days riding for multiple hours, they never uh, get too hot. Um, this one, I'm gonna leave the front of the box open so that we can get some airflow through here. And then this will kind of go ideally in the back somewhere around this area where the airflow can come through and it will be the last thing in the battery box. So ideally the heat will kind of come right off of it and then go through the gap that will still be under the seat and above the, the frame rail. So this is what I'm thinking. Uh, the only other components that need to go in here are things like flasher relay, which is pretty small. I mentioned the starter solenoid, one main fuse. So there's a decent amount of wiring, but I think this will be pretty good. So the measurements end up around 11 inches long five inches wide at the front. I think I'm gonna do six inches wide at the back. And then I'm thinking a depth of two inches. So the thickest thing I have again is my battery that is only one and a quarter inches, maybe a little bit more than that. So two inches still gives me, you know, three quarters of an inch of clearance. And then also, you know, there's a little bit of give on the front of the seat. Uh, show you where it mounts. It was like a little bit of a lip and stuff, so it can kind of go up in here a little bit. So I think two inches is gonna do it. Uh, worst case scenario, we can always space it down a little bit more to give us more clearance, you know, should we need it. So I've got my sheet metal over here. This is 16 gauge. I'm kind of just laying out the general box design. I want to cut it all out in one piece and then be able to bend each side up and then bend the back up where ideally they meet up nicely and I can just weld the you know two seams back here and the rest will be all kind of one piece. That's uh, what I'm gonna try and pull off. Uh, that's why I got my finger break is so I can do stuff like this. Um, I just need to, I think I'm gonna need to shift this back a little bit. Uh, if you can even see the silver outline, I did it in silver first for this reason. And then just so that when I bend it, uh, you know, this front seam will come up and match with the front line of the box itself. I don't know if any of this is making sense. It'll kind of make sense as I go. So I'm going to transfer this template about mm, half an inch back. We'll do it in black Sharpie, cut it out, and then we'll go over to the break. Box bent up. I'll kind of put it about like that. That'll look pretty good. You'll be able to see some of it sticking out of the bottom, but it'll be maybe half, three quarters of an inch. And then of course this will be painted black, so it won't stick down nearly as far as uh, some of the ones I've built in the past, which is obviously our goal. 
So what I'm thinking about doing, obviously I need to weld up this back seam, but I want to do a piece bent, you know, probably just a, a 90 degree bend from here to here, so I can run two mounting tabs off of this bar. And then we'll do a cross connection here to strengthen up the front of this. And that will also give us a place to mount off of here. Same way I've done, I've mounted literally all of my battery boxes. So that's the plan. Got the mounts just tacked into place. So I just put a strip right across the front with a little bit of a kind of extended section that will go into this stock portion of the frame. We'll drill to match one of the holes and then drill another one so we can put two bolts through here. This is a piece of 90 degree angle back here, right off the back to this center support. We still have room for our studs to come through, wing nut from underneath, shouldn't be a problem. So this looks like it's going to work out quite well. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is pull this off and then go ahead and finish weld everything. Give it a quick grind and then we can work on filling this. So I'm going to end up doing uh, similar to what I did in the Kawasaki build is I will like weld two bolts kind of with the threads going up and then it'll slide down. That's how we can mount our uh, voltage regulator. I'll probably get some kind of hook system designed in here to be able to run a strap over to have our battery. Either that or some kind of like bolt-in battery hold down so our battery's not shifting around and just you know try to keep as many of the components secure as possible but next step now is going to be finish welding. Welding and grinding done. You can see how nice it is when it kind of ends up being just one solid box all together with no real noticeable seams. Uh, so pretty happy with how that turned out. That's real nice. Nice and level. I have to... Yeah, that should be good. So I just need to drill some holes and then um, we can start to <laughs> try and smash all these components in here, figure out where they're gonna fit. Okay, it's a little bit of a jumble right now, um, but I think I got the kind of layout figured out. So I'm gonna have the Regulator rectifier back here, battery kind of in the center in this orientation, positives on this side, negatives on that side. So the ground can come in and go right to it. We'll run a positive around to one leg of our starter solenoid. Starter solenoid, I'm gonna utilize the stock kind of rubber mount. We will just uh, weld on a little tab to kind of go in those slots and hold it. So it'll kind of float, you know, a quarter of an inch or so above and be isolated with rubber. Then our wire that runs to our starter will be able to go right to the other leg and then our main power will be able to connect you know to the same one as the battery side as well so that all fit the wiring for the voltage regulator and everything will kind of tuck in up here on the top should be pretty good and I can do some wire management and some zip ties and stuff to make it all look good but it looks like all of the components are going to fit this is the wiring that's going to run our rear signals in our brake light so that'll be ready to go that direction. So I think this is all gonna work out. This goes out there. You can see it's very nice and tidy up there, especially when it's painted black, it should disappear because you think about it, most of the time you're viewing the bike is gonna be about from this angle. So it should uh, disappear quite nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and find some bolts that we can turn into studs, make a mark for that and then see if I can find, I'd like to find maybe the, uh, you know, elastic piece that comes in a stock battery for a CB550 and maybe be able to weld that in here so that it can kind of hold everything in place because I definitely don't want this battery bouncing around in here.
for our mounts. So we have our two studs. We have two kind of flat, uh, I'm gonna call them flat hooks. And then the um, little bracket that we just cut off of this stock piece for the starter solenoid. I'll figure out the proper way to get this in here. I think it goes back first. In the front. <laughs> And then we start to feed everything through. And then when that's all bolted, of course the seat will go over it. And then you'll be able to un, you know, bolt the seat with those wing nuts, gain access to this should you need to go in here, check the main fuse, you know, anything like that. I'll probably um, maybe, I don't know, eventually put something with a little rubber or something just to have like a few spare fuses or something in here, just in case one of these pops. Uh, when you're out riding for whatever reason, you can have some spares, you're not gonna be stranded. So I got the battery box painted and drying over there. And what I wanna move on to now is my mini speedo so this is just a little mini speedo that i have uh, used on quite a few builds link to this is in the description as well it's inexpensive works well it's got our little indicator lights in it the high beam neutral oil pressure and turn signals so that'll fit I'm thinking somewhere right around here i want to keep it pretty low i got to make sure the angle you know lets our speedometer drive cable comes straight out and clear the headlight and then can wrap down to our drive on the wheel. My thought process is I wanna get all of the components that are gonna to need to be wired installed and the wires kind of ran to their respective areas. Then ideally in one fail swoop, I can wire everything together. So I'm gonna work on that. What I think I'm gonna do is there's these little holes, little, I'm gonna call it an eyelet that kind of hangs off the top of the triple where the stock um, kind of gauges mounted. And I wanna utilize those mounting tabs, but I don't wanna just like have a straight piece across here or something because then the Speedo is gonna be the tallest part of the bike. So I'm gonna to need to make two brackets that kind of are in an S shape that are gonna come kind of off of here, down probably, probably a full inch and then 90 degrees and then we'll use these two mounting studs on the bottom. So I'm gonna get my little six inch ruler and just kind of measure where I think it'll fit and then we'll find some stock that we can bend up. It doesn't have to be anything crazy thick. This thing is not very heavy, but we're gonna have two of them and they'll need to you know, match identically so that you know this thing isn't gonna be kind of crooked this direction or twisted one way or the other. We want it to be nice and square and about right there. Little S brackets are done. So our speedo is gonna mount right there, nice in the center, we're not too tall. I went ahead and threw a cable on as well. Had a nice short one that will hug the fork tube and then runs up right in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint those black so they hopefully blend in. So these are the signals I'm using, just little LEDs. Just has a little stud that goes out. So I'm gonna measure a certain distance. I'm not sure what that's gonna be yet to place them right about here. And then I can match that on the other side. So let's grab, I'll just do it with a set of calipers. Somewhere. Not that far looks good. 32 millimeters. Kind of make a little mark and what I think is the center. Come to this side, do the same thing. Then we will see this thing is about 41, eh, 40 millimeters at the point where I want to put it. So I'll put this down to 20. And 
will be our center line. Then I can take my center punch. Mark it right there. Grab the drill. Take my little Noga deburring tool. Deburr the hole. It'll be just like that, nice and clean. So it is now Saturday morning and I have read a lot of your comments. So I decided to kind of change up what I'm gonna do. So originally my plan was to come out here, bust out a lot of this wiring. Uh, I don't have a ton of time, so it was gonna end up being a time lapse. And that would have made this video uh, basically just a lot of time lapses. And reading your comments from the last video, a lot of you guys actually really enjoy me showing you what I'm doing, kind of talking through my thought process. And wiring is one of the things I get a lot of questions about and I think it intimidates a lot of people. So I've decided instead of rushing through this, I'm going to just wait and then start this project in the next video. And I will walk you guys through how I'm gonna wire the entire, um, basically the entire front end of this motorcycle. So what I'm gonna do to wire the kill switch, the signal, the headlight circuit, all of that stuff where the wires are gonna go, how I'm gonna utilize one of my turn signal diodes. I sell these on the website to um, help people when they switch over to LED lights be able to still keep their uh, turn signal indicator. And I think a lot of people will hopefully benefit from that. So instead of, you know, like I said, rushing through and trying to finish up this video, I am going to call it and we're gonna do all of that in the next video. So stay tuned if you want to kind of learn about wiring. I think we did accomplish quite a bit today. Uh, I know that this video is gonna inherently just be a lot of time lapses because I hadn't read your comments yet, uh, but the battery box being done is a big stress relief. Really, we don't have a huge amount of um, work left. It's obviously wiring's a big thing. The gas tank is a pretty uh, decent project. And then we have a lot of like five minute jobs, throttle cables, brake lines, clutch cable, that kind of stuff. Um, but technically we have two full working days for me to stay on my schedule. And then now that I'm gonna be home somewhat this weekend, uh, I might be able to sneak in an hour or two of work uh, tomorrow as well, which you guys will see in uh, the next video. So the next video will be out on Tuesday. I'm gonna start filming a little bit on Sunday, all day Monday, and then um, you know post it up on Tuesday as soon as I can. So that will be mostly wiring and probably a lot of odds and ends, and I don't know, we'll see how much we can get done. So I'm gonna stop rambling. I really do appreciate everybody's positive uh, feedback on this series. The bike's coming together. We're gonna hit our deadline, whether I have to stay up for 24 hours straight to do it. Um, I appreciate all the new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, um, I would love it if you would. Like the video, and I'll see you guys on Tuesday.